And joining us now on the debate, four former speakers of the Ontario Legislature. In chronological order, David Warner, speaker from 1990 to 1995. Gary Carr, from 1999 to 2003. Alvin Curling, from 2003 to 2005. And Steve Peters, from 2007 to 2011. Gentlemen, as I welcome you all here to TVO, first of all, it's great to see you all. I do want to point out that we had Chris Stockwell, who was also a speaker from 1996 to 99, who was going to join us, but he had something come up at the last minute and couldn't. The bad news is we will miss him. The good news is you will all get a chance to speak. <laughs> so with that, no, seriously, Chris, we miss you tonight. We wish you were here. Let's break up our discussion in two parts. Civility inside the legislature, civility or the lack thereof outside the legislature. So let's start with inside. You had the job last, so I'm going to start with you. What's your understanding of the kind of behavior inside the legislature, say a question period, that you think the public expects politicians should follow? Well, I think the public is expecting the opposition to keep the government accountable, to ask those tough questions, even if it's asking for a resignation. I think where it starts to cross the line is when some of the comments that are, are made are start to get to a personal level, or the heckling. The, you can just hear that tone rise in the chamber, and that heckling that gets back and going back and forth across the floor uh, makes it very difficult for everyone, anyone to follow what's going on. Gary, what's an okay heckle and what's not an okay heckle? Well, you can use a couple of examples. Our good friend Chris used to heckle. Him and Jim Bradley used to, to heckle, but they did it with a style, with a sense of humor, <laughs> as opposed to the guys that are just yelling and screaming. And, and then that's a little bit of a difference because I think that's acceptable. In fact, you know, guys like Chris and, and Jim Bradley would keep the place light. They'd get their point across very strongly, but it was done with a sense of humor and we'd all laugh. Yeah. And I think, uh, I think that kept the house a little bit more loose than the, the, just the yelling and screaming that we sometimes see uh, in later periods. Uh. Alvin, do we have um, unrealistic expectations about what goes on there? You got more than 100 people, all of whom have got pretty big egos. They, you know, they knocked on 30,000 doors to get there. And frankly, they don't want you telling them what they can and can't say. Is there some of that going on? Well, I, I, think, I think Parliament is the, is the way you play out democracy. And there's 106 members there who expect to be heard. And a matter of fact, the structure is of such that they are not heard. So the frustrations are played out there itself. It just, it's just focused on ministers and the others are heckling itself. And it's, and it's focused on the speaker who, as a matter of fact, I would say have limited uh, enforcement. Just limited enforcement? Yes. Well, I mean, you can't hit anybody, but what can you do? Well, you can, do, you can dismiss someone, but mm -hmm. the fact is that you have to be sort of equal uh, and fair because they, they all believe that um, you're going to be biased towards your member. And it's, it's very easy to be fair in the House of the Speaker. Very easy because you're focusing on actually a fairness with it all. Otherwise, other people feel that you're partisan, but the partisan process, I find, is not there at all as a Speaker. Well, let me ask about that, David, because you got elected as a new Democrat, mm -hmm. but then you are expected to be above partisan politics and representing everybody. Mm -hmm. Can you do that? Yes. How do you do that? Well, for starters, it's a secret ballot. You don't know who voted for you, who, who didn't. I, I know my nominators. Alvin was nominated me. Uh, it at the end of the of the uh, exercise, you're beholden to everyone equally. So your test is every day in terms of. I go along a lot with what Alvin said. I mean, it, you. Uh, you're not going to be partisan. You've withdrawn yourself from caucus, and you now have this more neutral role to play. Did you throw a lot of people out? No. And they always threw themselves out. <laughs> what does that mean? Well, it means that you've given them an opportunity. I never believed that anyone could stay genuinely angry for more than 45 seconds. <laughs> so I gave them about a minute, and then to, now the member really wishes to have himself removed. I mean, that, so at that point, they've calmed down, and it's, it's theater, and, and, and bad theater, but it's, it's theater, and, and they're going to get themselves tossed out all by themselves. I never threw anyone out. Peter Milliken, the, of course, longest-serving speaker of all time in the federal parliament, used to say he, he always hesitated throwing somebody out because, of course, the second you throw somebody out, the media is all over them, and they get more attention for bad behavior than if you just let them pop off a bit. Yeah. Do you take I, the same approach? I can... With a former speaker, Mr. Speaker, here, I can remember a situation myself in 2001 and having a liberal staffer coming in behind me, Peters, Peters, get yourself kicked out. And the headlines at home, after I said some unkind things towards Helen Johns, the minister, but the headlines at home were in the London Free Press, Peters ejected from the legislature defending cuts at, at the hospital. Hmm. So, yes, it, it certainly did generate uh, some publicity back it's home. It's good politics to get thrown out. 
Well, it's it, it maybe there may be some yeah. politics involved, but it's um, you, you, I'm, I'm with David. You don't want to. Somebody wants to get thrown out. You know, mm -hmm. you don't throw them out. I look back. I think 80 percent of the people that I named as speaker was during question period. It didn't take place during the rest of the debates. Most of the debates are very quiet and sedate. It's that focus on question period and the namings that I was involved in were questions. We should just explain. You don't, you don't say, I kick you out. You say, I name you. I named, Steve, I named Steve Pakin, the, the member from Scarborough Southwest, and Mr. Uh, uh, Sergeant in uh, Arms. St. Paul's. We're in St. Paul's today. St. Paul's, Paul's today. Okay. <laughs> All right. Gary, did you throw a lot of people out? I set the record. Did was, you really? I was over 50 that I threw out, including, oh, oh, uh, I think the NDP had eight in their caucus. I threw out six one day. <laughs> Throughout cabinet ministers, uh, almost threw the premier out uh, in the famous incident with uh, which premier with uh, um, Mike Harris over uh, Dalton McGinty and him referring to his uh, his father. So I stood up and I said, I don't know if a premier's ever been thrown out, but if you do that again, premier, I'm throwing you out. Um, threw him out, but uh, getting back to, to Steve's point, hang on, hang on, don't leave that light yet. For sure, I I think I was there that day. Yeah, Dalton McGinty and Mike Harris had a thing about their dads, right? They, they insulted well, their... Well, what happened is um, Dalton was very... He was a, he's a litigator, so he was a, a good lawyer and a strong... Went after Mike pretty strongly, but he was polite and fair, and Mike made reference to his, his father, of course, who had served and, and had passed away. Um, I think he said something like, if your father were here today, Dalton, he'd be, he'd be ashamed of, oh, himself, yeah, of your yeah, behavior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, and he was... And, and, uh, and the now Premier Dalton McGinty was uh, visibly shaken and... Uh, and that's when I said, uh, if you ever do that again, I'm going to throw you out. Didn't have to, uh, but yeah, I threatened the, uh, the so premier. So you threatened to, th to throw Harris out? Threatened to, to throw him out. And I think, if, if memory serves me, I think uh, Jim Flaherty was sitting there and yelled out, you can't do that. And I said, yes, I can, and I will. <laughs> so, um, now tell me, what, what was it about what Mike Harris said that, in your view, crossed a line of incivility? Well, the families. Uh, you should leave your families out of this. Um, and of course, uh, you know, dragging them into it. You can go hard at anybody else. That's fair game. Go at me, but don't uh, talk about mm -hmm. the families. But I, uh, you know, getting back to Steve's point, I had, well, uh, George Smitherman came in one day and said, Gary, I'm getting kicked out today. So he warned me. <laughs> so, uh, you know, which was nice because, okay, what can you do? And it's like Elvin said, we're the referees. We don't make the rules, so we can't say, okay, you're going to get uh, penalized financially. We have to enforce the rules, but we don't get to set the rules. And he came in, and I think it was over the uh, the hospital in his riding at the time, the, the Wellesley uh, Hospital or something closed, and he came in, and he gave me a warning. He's an old hockey player, and he said, okay, Garrett, I'm going to get thrown out today. Watch for me. So, okay, George, sure. get ready. And, and you obliged him. And, um, and he walked out the end and, and got the press at the end of the uh, uh, the house and got his, uh, his piece uh, in the, in the well, press. Alvin, I wanted to raise this with you because w when you were part of David Peterson's government that came in in 1985, and that was the first time we had television in the legislature. That's right. You know, sort of the, the you know, daily gavel to gavel of question period. <clears throat> Do you think behavior got worse in the legislature once television was introduced? Yes. I think it got worse. I think, again, is the frustration of those who want to be shown that I've been elected and I'm, a, I'm in Parliament, and I have to demonstrate that I, I am here to represent you all. So any, anything at all that can get the attention, you know, as Steve said, Steve Peter said that, well, if I get thrown out, the, the, the local press is all over. Mm -hmm. That kind of does a little different for those in Toronto, because the, the local press don't really pay attention to local guys as much. They are more focused on the issue, and so get being thrown out uh, in Scarborough Rouge River, for instance, is no big deal. For, 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 for profile. Hmm. But it has gotten worse because then everyone will see that and see the person standing for their rights, that kind of stuff. Right. Was it your impression, David, that TV made things worse? The advent of TV improved the attire. <laughs> <laughs> Memory, and we went through a whole pro I was on the committee that we uh, agreed to bring in the, uh, the television. And I, I don't know that it made things worse. I, I think there was, for a short while, a fair bit of grandstanding. The use of props, which later were, people wear T-shirts or they bring other stuff into the house. Mel swore to bring his little grocery store in and with the rolls of toilet paper and so they bought in Buffalo at lower prices, you know, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And so there's a bit of theater to it all. But I think uh, the, the greater good was that it made it uh, more accessible to average people around the province to be able to see uh, the the legislature, and I, I think that that outweighed the the theater. Steve Peters, what do you think? Is t has TV made a difference in people's behavior? 
Um, I think to a degree. I, I think it's, it's interesting. Uh, a colleague of yours, John Iveson, wrote uh, when Jack Layton tried to bring in a, a kinder, gentler House of Commons, Iveson made a comment that it uh, question period generated a good afternoon nap. And uh, it, it uh, you know, you've seen Jack Layton try it. I remember John Tory tried really hard to get the tone of his own caucus uh, down. Um, and they were still effective in, in opposition of doing, in, in, in doing their jobs. So um, I don't, I'm not a believer that it's, it's TV. I think that there, there is a role for the opposition to play. There's a role for the government to play. Uh, but uh, has TV enhanced uh, some of the, the, the disobedience in the House? I, I don't believe so. Gary, what do you think? Well, we were talking earlier, and when I first came in in the early 90s, there used to be a real style. We talked about when uh, when Bob Nixon was there and Bob Ray and uh, and different people like that. Conway. Yeah, Steve and Conway. Lewis. They would go at each other with a real style. And I was a youngster. I uh, was 36 year old and came in there. One third, I'd rush in and watch these guys go at it. But there was a real style, and they go back well, re very tough on each other. But there was a real style, and there was some you know some uh, great language that was used. Uh, uh, Ian Scott, great litigator, and of course he would come in, and him and Bob Ray, and I'd sit there and just watch these guys go back and forth. When I left as speaker, I was just come in, yell, get thrown out, and in fact, um, uh, Dwight Duncan was a house leader, and he one time said to me, he said, you know, it's in our interest to make this place look like it's out of control, so that people will say, look, the government's out of control, and let's uh, elect the, the liberals next time. Hmm. And he was a house leader. So if you've got the for house the opposition for the, the opposition time. at the time, and of course uh, now the finance minister this week with his budget, so when you've got the house leaders as a part of the strategy saying that they, they want to disrupt things, it makes it very difficult. And I think everybody would agree the leaders take a real role as well. You mentioned the ones that did. Um, when I was there, Mike Harris is very aggressive up at the, the federal house, uh, Stephen Harper is. Um, so th they really set the tone. And for a period of time with John Tory and Jack Layton, they got their, their caucuses in. But if you've got the leaders that are very aggressive, most of the caucuses will follow them and say, and I notice this with the young ones coming in, okay, this is how it's done. This is how we behave. It's almost like kids at school. Oh, I guess this is how we do it with the leader. So the guys that were good, and going back to the, the era before with the Bill Davis, the real style I think has been lost over so the, the last few years. I was there with uh, Stephen Lewis, Bob Nixon, and yep. Bill Davis. Yeah. And those three set the tone in the House, which, you know, fierce debate, no question, but it was, it was oratory, you know, and, it, with respect. and that's, yes, and with respect and with humor. And, uh, and sure, there was a lot of tension from time to time, was, but nothing in terms of personal attacks, nothing in terms of, uh, of trying to belittle one another, but good, honest debating. But, but and even, skillful. But, but even with the setting the tone, actually, even leaders would try to set a tone like John Tory. When I was speaker, I spoke to him about some of his members and said, listen, we want some sort of better order in the house. And John Beard was completely out of order and completely irreverent to his leader itself. And John Tory actually told me that there's no control I can do in that one. John Tory said there's nothing yes, I can do about yes. it. Yes, we just wait the time out for him to be reelected. <laughs> Why, tell me about this, Alva, why, I mean, some of the behavior that politicians get away with in question period, for example, would certainly not be tolerated in any other workplace anywhere in the country. Why do politicians seem to think that that kind of behavior is acceptable for that workplace? I, I think, again, as I said, it's posturing and showing off uh, themselves inside the house itself and said, oh, big and bad I am. People remember these kind of uh, demonstrations itself. Because the fact is that, uh, ironic, and I'm not picking an individual, here's an individual who so be so irreverent and, it, and then becomes the, the ambassador of the world. Hmm. You know? And I said, wow, just a flip. It's all a show itself. And, um, and then I said, and people, next election, you said, my golly, that behavior, you will never get elected. Usually the vote go, goes up. No kidding. So crime pays. Parliamentary crime pays. <laughs> but you, can't, you can't paint the whole, I, I, would, I think it would, we, we, none of us would say it's, was, it's the whole of the house. I, I could count on two hands yeah. Yeah. who caused me yeah. angst. Yeah. The vast majority of the members, I would probably have never even called them to order. Okay, you're a liberal. Were the, were, did you have more problems with liberals or with conservatives or New Democrats? I would say it was probably equal all around. Hmm. I can yeah. think over and I can think a couple to my right who uh, were in government and a few to my, and to my left. But it, it wasn't the whole of the House. Sure. It was, it was a, hand, a couple handfuls I of agree. members mm -hmm. that Absolutely. disrupted it. And, Quite honestly, I think made us made made us all look bad. It it reflected collectively on the whole of the house. Gary, what? let me ask you this: Who's worse, men or women, at bad behavior in the legislature? 
Well, um, you know, going back to looking at the federal health, you had <laughs> Sheila Coffs. We had Sandra Prupatella, who was very aggressive. Oh, yes. Um, Janet Eklund was aggressive when she yeah. was in there as well. So I don't think you can, you can say it was conservatives or it was liberals or it was an NDP or men or women um, because I, I think over the course we've seen it all. But uh, Steve's 100% correct. It was just a few that give you the, the big problem. And the strategy I had, and sometimes speakers use their own strategy. David's, uh, of course, very uh, thorough and very, uh, uh, very laid back. He tried that style. Chris tried the humor even as speaker, mm -hmm. uh, which, uh, which helped. And I, the old hockey player, I was tossing out. <laughs> that was it. Out you go. Uh, and that worked for a while. And what happened is, uh, after a little while, it became so commonplace that uh, the press used to, if you remember, would be right out the end doors because they would be escorted out by the by the sergeant arms and they'd meet out the front door and the press would uh, break their necks trying to get down to the stairs to be there by the time I, after I hit 50 and I know I hit 50 I don't know I, I went a little above that by the injections. End of, uh, injections. <laughs> so by the end of that it was nothing okay another guy got thrown out and so uh, uh, they wouldn't wait for him so it got it got diminished a, a little bit towards the end but during that period of time when it used to be really something if you got thrown out, uh, boy, they, they really uh, got the, the press for being the ones that were really taking the other side to the, the wall. Alvin Curlin, men or women, who would you have more trouble with in terms of civil behavior? Well, the, 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 um, the balance is there. You have much more men in there anyhow, so I'd mm -hmm. have to say men, but again, it, it doesn't matter. The, uh, the, my colleagues have named a couple of those people who are like that, you see. And yet there are, there are some people who are very, very aggressive, but very fair. Take, for instance, one of the most respected guys to obey is Flaherty. Everybody would expect that he's sort of facely, but I never had problem with Flaherty. You know, he's, he's firm, and then he's good, and he, he push you to the edge, and then you call an order. State. But men or women? I wouldn't even call it, actually, but you know, I could call names, of course, and the same names that my colleagues have said. You, know? you guys are so Canadian, you know that? Yeah. You're just a... <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, we... I, I, Go ahead, David. I'd, well, the day I got elected as speaker, and I did have a scrum, and, and uh, what was my expectation? My expectation with more women in the House is that it will be more calm, calmer, reasoned debate. Was that the case? And it was for the most part, huh. yes, I would say that... If, if you take a look at who the troublemakers were, so to speak, it was by and large men. And uh, it's just, I think, women politicians, with some exception, uh, rely more on calm, reasoned approach rather than yelling or trying to bully someone. Hmm. And, I, and it's the odd exception, but yeah, I'll stand by that. And it was my experience. It may not have been anybody else's experience. How much of this, Steve Peters, is the fault of the media? We put the spotlight on the bad behavior. Well, I, I made the comment about what Iveson said about a refreshing afternoon nap. There, I remember reading another quote of the Federal House of saying it was like chicken wings without the hot sauce. Question period was quite bland. Um, so, you know, I, I, I will. I, I think the media wants to, to hear um, some excitement within the House. Um, and, and I do think that the media, if you, you look at, if you review any of the jurisdictions that where the Speaker or the House as a whole has said, we want to tone the place down. You review the literature in Canada, New Zealand, in the UK, the media is very critical of, of how the House is operating. So I don't, we can't have it both ways. Okay. I, but we've talked about behavior inside the legislature. We want to talk about incivility in politics outside the legislature. But before we do, I notice three of you are wearing your MPP pins which you get when you're an elected member of the Ontario Legislature. Right. We pay for it. Yes. Okay. <laughs> you hasten that. And you are former members, but you obviously, having been elected, still get to wear them. Gary, I notice you're not wearing yours. Is that because you're a... You're still a politician. These guys are not. You still are. Yeah, probably. The, I, uh, I, do, I got it safely tucked away, and I uh, look at it on occasion. But, uh, yeah, I, I came from actually an event this morning, so I didn't have it on there because people would say, what the heck is that? <laughs> and you're, you're the regional chairman of Holt now. Of course, yeah. I you're brought still. this in partly as a security thing. We had, in the 1990 election, there were a lot of young people elected. And they would come in on the weekends to, to work, and they're using their jeans and, and so on. And they were running into some, a lot of questions from the security people. But because they didn't look very, they didn't look old enough to be MPPs. Remind everybody, this is the Bob Ray election. The yeah, first I don't and only ever NDP government, and no one knew half yeah, the folks in the your caucus. In their 20s and that, and, yeah. I, and so 
this is a secure base. My well, member had never been to Toronto before. Yes, yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. You'll wear this and mm -hmm. you walk in. And it, it, it made their lives a little easier. And it, and it helped the security people as well because they had a pretty clear idea who belonged and who didn't. So, so that your was your idea funny. to bring the pin in? Yes. Oh, huh. okay. But no, let, let, let me say about, about the press, though, because mm -hmm. I think there was a, there's an aspect of it about question period. Question period raised, raised the topic. And there's a, so, so much they can go into. And the press itself plays an important role to carry it further to get better, more answers out of that question. And I thought it was very, very, very useful. Mark, you intimidating like the hell, like, like when I was the Minister of Housing. But the fact is that they carried it further for more explanation. So there was a helpful process in question period. In other words, we say they draw the knife, the blood, and then they, uh, the vultures get out you there and eat you alive. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Oh, boy, on that uh, wow. ignominious <laughs> note, let's move on. I want to read two things to you gentlemen, and then I want to get your comments on them. As you know, this past week, the federal New Democrats elected a new leader, Thomas Mulcair. And here's what the Bob Ray-led Liberal Party of Canada put out on the day Mulcair won. Here's the press release. It says, I want to offer my warm congratulations to Thomas Mulcair on winning the leadership contest in the New Democratic Party. I know Mr. Mulcair well and look forward to working with him to ensure Parliament acts on behalf of all Canadians. I also want to congratulate the NDP for a successful leadership convention, particularly in opening up the selection process to Canadians across the country. I also want to salute Madame Nicole Termel for the integrity she showed as interim leader of the NDP. Her grace was apparent as she courageously carried out her duties admirably in the wake of the tragic passing of Jack Layton, Bob Ray, interim leader, Liberal Party of Canada. On the other hand, here's what Cabinet Minister James Moore said on the same day. Of Mr. Mulcair, he's a hard left ideologue who believes in bigger taxes, bigger government, and he's a very divisive and vicious guy, said Federal Heritage Minister James Moore, who observed the convention. I think Thomas Mulcair's track record of divisiveness is not something that has been good for the NDP, and it certainly never would be good for Canada if he were Prime Minister. Why do I bring this up? Because once upon a time, I thought that on the day you win, your first day, they cut you some slack because it was the civil thing to do. It doesn't appear, Steve, that we play by those rules anymore. At least some people don't play by those rules anymore. Am I right? Well, it's, yeah. the, the, you, I don't think you would have seen something like that in Ontario. I can tell you, at any by-election that I witnessed, when that new member came into the chamber yeah. with, uh, with this, the clerk and the premier, mm -hmm. the whole house stood up. Mm -hmm. And even when that person stood up to make their first statement or their first question in the house, everybody applauded. There was, they, there was, they, they gave them some leeway yeah, yeah. Um, and you know I'm, I'm pleased that we haven't seen it, us get to this level in Ontario but I would say for the most part anything that I've witnessed in the 12 years that I was there when a new member arrived there was a lot of respect shown to that person. David what about and it, Well it, it, to pick up on what Steve mentions I can recall certainly uh, between 75 and 81 when it, if a newly elected member came in via by election, senior members of other caucuses would come over and greet that new yeah. member. And, and I remember myself going over to meet uh, a newly elected conservative or liberal, and I'd say, look, uh, you know, we're, at night when, uh, when the house uh, finished at 1030, we gather if this hockey game's still on and we'll have a beer and how about you join us? You know, there was that kind of camaraderie, you know, because we all got there the same way. <coughs> we ended up with more votes than anybody else on the ballot mm -hmm. in that riding. We all got there the same way. It doesn't matter what party you're from. I mean, and there was that kind of atmosphere. And so when a statement like that, which is, goes national, does a great disservice to, to the institution, to other colleagues of, of his own party who might be prone to welcoming someone. Now they will feel uh, less inclined to do so. I watched the first question period that Mulcair, statements that the Conservatives were reading, these nasty statements. I think as Speaker, I, I think I would have got up because, to your point earlier about the, the personal attacks, those statements that were being read, those were direct personal attacks on Mulcair. I, I, I never would have tolerated that. When I first came in, believe it or not, if you can believe this, 
when a minister would get up and he and her, uh, him or her would answer their first question, everybody in the house would actually clap because it was their first yes. answer to the question yeah, and they would give them some slides. As a new minister. As a new minister, regardless of the side, yeah. it happened uh, when I first got there with the NDP. So uh, the new ministers came in, there was a lot of new ministers. So when they would answer their first question, everybody would get, it, uh, get up and... It's hard to imagine and it, today. And, yeah. and it is hard to believe. My now they go after them. Uh, there's the rookie with the first one, whammo, we go That's after right. him. So, and, and that was the, the early 90s. So things have changed in a relatively short period of time to what I saw versus what you see there today. Exactly. In 1985, my first question was to, to, to Premier Frank Miller. I was as nervous as, as, as the Dickens. And um, this is just before we became government, within May. Uh, and after in June, we, uh, we became the government. And I was so nervous. By the time they applauded, everyone applauded. All of my senses kind of came back a bit, and I felt confident mm -hmm. that I belonged. Mm -hmm. And that, that should never yeah. disappear. But what's going on in the political DNA of the country or of politicians, of some politicians nowadays, where even on the first day, you can't say something nice about the person opposite. Why do we do that? There's partly, uh, I don't think we should ever view politics or, or any other institution uh, uh, that is it's monolithic or it stands by itself. You know, we're part of society. I mean, to a certain extent, what you're seeing in the legislatures across the country or in Ottawa is uh, perhaps a reflection too of a society that's very pressured and a society that isn't um, relaxed enough with itself. I think that's part of it. And part of it as well is we've had all these big uh, turnovers, so many new seats. When I came into the House, we, uh, I was surrounded by members who had been there for a long time and you learned from them. Now, if you, if you come into any, just about any legislature, the people beside you arrived at the same time as you did. And so there isn't that institutional memory that, that there should be. I think that that's part of it as well. And, I think, and third and finally, I think that um, it, members who are, uh, they're more prone sometimes because of what staff are saying to them. With staff, the staff are, are worse than the members sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Okay. and I yeah. hear these stories about staff saying, uh, you shouldn't socialize with people on the other side, you know, and, and that to me is just pure wrong, and I, and so it's coming from that aspect as well. Gary, you're cons you were a conservative MPP, so I'm going to ask you this question: Does it does it seem to you that the Conservative Party, either provincially or federally today, is more uncivil? than some of the others. I gave the Mulcair example here. Well, when you look at the elections and you look at the U.S., the right wing, the, the, the Tea Party, there's that anger. So to, to some extent, but then, you know, you look at somebody like, a, we all served with Elizabeth Whitmer. There isn't a finer yes. member in there and, uh, and almost became leader of my, uh, the, the person who uh, uh, nominated me, uh, Ted Arnott. Um, I've always said, you know, after politics, he's going to get sainthood, one of the, <laughs> the nicest persons I've ever met. So you can't really say that, but certainly the, the, the leadership of, uh, of the right wing, just when they're, like, they're, they're polarizing, sometimes with the left wing as well, there is that anger that I noticed out there um, that is, is getting worse, and quite frankly, it works. What is happening now is uh, the vilifying of the other side. Mm -hmm. It's the, not only are their policies bad, but they're bad people. And that never happened before when I started. Yeah. We used to go out, I had a birthday, um, uh, we were on committee one time, and uh, Peter Cormos was there, and Peter was pretty aggressive, and we'd had a little bit of a dust up in the committee. And um, I had walked out, and I had to come back in because they had a birthday cake for me at the committee, and it was August uh, 14th, my birthday, and they said, uh, and I got mad, and, and we'd had a little bit of a dust up with uh, Peter, who actually, as you know, is a, a wonderful man. So I had stalked out uh, this committee meeting, and they said, you better get back in there. I'm not going back in there. Well, they got a birthday cake for you. So you went back in there. Now, I can guarantee you, in the House of Commons, with the governments there at the federal level, and yeah. even the there are no birthday cakes to the opposition members in, in, the, in the legislature today. Day. And that's where I think we've lost something because yeah. we can differ. Um, you know, I've said this, I've married over 30 years and I differ with my wife, but there was a respect for each other. The respect is gone. And I mentioned, you know, the, the, the situation with, uh, with some of the veterans being there. And when I left, if you remember, we had fingers in the, uh, you know, being put up in the, to the guys across the, uh, the hall. All mm -hmm. respect had, had been lost, and I think David's point's there. There wasn't the institutional memory, and there wasn't this attitude, well, David and I might disagree, but I still mm -hmm. respect David. Uh, go ahead. Committees Steve. don't travel anymore. I think that was, uh, you, you used yeah. to, I think from what I've heard, this sense of camaraderie where I have to admit, I got to know the members of the opposition better in my last four years than I did in eight years previously. 
But when committees would go out and travel around the province, all three parties, you all spent time together. You got to know each other. You know, I've heard the stories. We were talking Eddie Sargent, Eddie Sargent loading everybody into his car, taking him to a Leafs game, or Frank Miller selling you a car or tickets. There was, there was a sense of camaraderie and, and, uh, and respect for one another because you were friends across the floor. And I think in a lot of ways that's been lost. You know where it's at today? Michael Ignatiev have told me this story recently where he was at an airport one morning and he noticed a conservative member of parliament who came over to say hello to him and within seconds the conservative MP was looking over his shoulders like this to see whether any other conservatives would be there seeing him talk to the yeah. leader of the Liberal Party because you wouldn't want to be seen talking to the leader of the Liberal Party. That's we pathetic. Wonder, we wonder that, why people don't want to get pathetic. into politics. Yeah, that's matter. pathetic. Yeah. Now having said that, uh, Mr. Ignatiev also says another thing which is, I took the example of, of the demonizing of Mulcair a second ago. Uh, you know, Ignatiev said that there were plenty of liberals in this country who demonized Harper while he was still either with National mm -hmm. Citizens Coalition or with the Reform Party or the Alliance, suggesting that his views were illegitimate, that he was somehow un-Canadian because he was small-c conservative. So this goes both ways, doesn't it? I mean, the left mm -hmm. is as guilty of this as the right from time to time. Fair I, to say? I, I'd agree we, with you. You would you agree. Know, you can't, yeah. uh, uh, I think all three parties are are as guilty. Um, so I don't think you can paint one party as being the troublemaker. And okay. the liberals had the Rat Pack and the... Uh, yes, <laughs> they did indeed. Do, and they weren't they did indeed. indeed. Uh, I don't know how much of what's going on south of the border you gentlemen are watching, the Republican mm -hmm. presidential mm -hmm. nomination fight. Alvin, as you watch that, have you, have you caught any of it? Do you see any of the debates or any of that kind of stuff? Some of the debates, yes. I mean, some people think that's, that's turned into a freak show down there. What do you think? Oh, yeah. I think so, too, because the fact is that um, the personal attacks um, that are, are, are on individuals are just outrageous. And um, the fact is that uh, when, when I look at, a, at a, a president who is elected by all the people and being attacked personally about his life at times, matter of fact, to the point that he's not even uh, American, to that, to that uh, aspect of it, it frightens, it frightens me, really. And there's a divide there, uh, which, is, uh, which is concern, of great concern. And I wonder, though, whether or not the left wing did the same thing to George W. Bush. Not just said, your policies are bad, yeah, but yeah. you're an idiot, you're a yes, fool, right, you're legitimate, exactly. you don't belong there. Same thing. I mean, well, yeah, I mean, if, if you, um, when you decide that uh, somehow democracy should be restricted, you know, we, then, then you're looking for trouble. I mean, a democracy is something that accepts all points of view and with a respectful debate on policy and philosophy. I mean, that's what a democracy is about. And do you hear something you don't like to then demonize it? This is not democratic, and it's not in the spirit of, of a, a democratic society. Gary? But it is getting more aggressive even than political advertising. Um, as you know, I was with the, the Conservatives in the 90, uh, w w when Lyndon Cloud was the leader. Uh, I remember the great debate with Tom Long of the, of the weather vane. And that was seen at that time as being, well, there was a lot of uh, Conservatives saying, well, you can't say that, that, you know, the famous weather vane ad that they had done. And that was going to be outrageous. Well, now that's nothing. Now the demonization that's out there. And even in the, uh, in the leadership internally, if you remember when Ernie Eves and Jim Flaherty, Jim Flaherty actually had people uh, dressed up in the chicken suit against his own <laughs> ultimate right. premier. And then we wonder why uh, uh, Premier Eves. Who, who was the waffle? Uh, yeah, yeah. And then <laughs> Premier That's Eves right. came in. And you wonder why he fired Jim, uh, Jim Flaherty as the, the finance minister. So it wasn't even uh, within parties. This, uh, this high tension, destroy the other person, was in, in leadership. And, of course, that's what you're talking about now with Republicans going mm -hmm. at each other, even within their own party. So you can imagine what it's like with the other side. And in that, uh, and, and with Lynn McLeod, I guess it was around 95, that was seen as outrageous. And now you've got, well, the, the robocalls being the ultimate, uh, but even the ads where they destroy personal character. And somebody like Stephen Dion, mm -hmm. who had, of course, fought for, for Canada and, and went after him personally. So when you, you see this, what it does is it, ruins it for people are saying I'm not going to get involved in mm. politics but I'll tell you this and I know this debate the reason they do it is it works it works it works yeah. and uh, and I, I remember because I was at the uh, the federal level with the liberals so I've, I've been lucky I've seen both caucuses from the inside and I'm actually writing a book and I'll, you can have me on when I, that comes out Steve <laughs> um, but I remember at that time uh, during the 2006 election a lot of liberals saying oh the people don't like this we can't be negative we can't be negative and of course the other side was and, uh, and has been very, very aggressive, and each election it gets worse and mm. worse and worse. Steve, and tell me works. this. Uh, you know, uh, I know the voters are always right. That's the you know, sine qua non from everything at election time. But what does it say about the voters when the most egregious behavior, the worst ads, the most disgusting kind of personal attacks stick? 
and work. What does this say about the electorate? Well, the electorate's turning off. I look at the 12 years mm -hmm. from when I was elected in 1999 to when I left and chose to leave in, uh, in 2011. Just in that 12-year period, three elections, the voting uh, percentage in Ontario dropped 10%. So uh, I, think, I think all the parties need to take a look at, you know, how effective is this? We, maybe we do need to get back and start talking about issues because people are just turning off and they're not turning out to vote. Is there, have we passed a point of no return? The, the toothpaste is out of the tube. Mm -hmm. Sorry, it's just never going to get more civil. It's only going to get worse. What do you think? No, I don't think so. I, I think that um, uh, uh, politics is like this. It goes up to, to this crescendo and then other people take some other issues. Uh, take, for instance, the, in my ride in Scarborough Wood River, where, where this uh, young lady who had won the NDP uh, individual, uh, of all the, the persons that would have won, the NDP winning there is an indication that there are other people who are listening with a different kind of air mm -hmm. and a different engagement. So therefore, she made sense, and she also has the fact that she has the people behind mm -hmm. her to get a, pop a popularity. So I don't think all is waste. Is the toothpaste out of the tube? No, I well maybe, but we, we're a finger. Find a way to put it back in. There are ways <laughs> to repair this. Really? Yeah, yeah. and uh, it takes leadership for sure, but there are some uh, things that can be done. Uh, participatory budgeting. We need to get uh, communities involved in in a budget process. P push this system down a bit and let let people, um, ordinary people, get more involved at the in the structural level. I, I had proposed and it got beaten back, but that there be a, uh, a committee of the legislature with equal representation from all three parties, and they have the power to uh, initiate legislation. And, I, and that went nowhere. Right. No government's going to allow I that. Would, yeah, I, but what it does is it then offers all the members an opportunity, if they work together, to actually create something. Okay, here's where I have to play Mr. Speaker, bring the gavel down and say we're out of time. <laughs> But this was a very civil conversation, and I thank all four of you for coming in today Thanks, to help Steve. us out with this. Thanks. Okay, David Warner, Alvin Curling, Gary Carr, Steve Peters, and of course we miss Chris Stockwell and we wish him the best. Support Ontario's public television. Donate at tvo.org.